said that if they don't listen to them, then they would not listen to one that comes back from the dead. Folks, I want you to know that that man is still there in that same place. Still wishing that he could get with that water on the tip of his tongue. And folks, I can tell you today, if he was allowed to come back just for 30 minutes, he would be running through these streets. He would be running through these stores trying to tell you just how bad and just how tormented he is in that place. But folks, the sad part is, he can't leave. And see, that's going to be the same thing that happens to you if you do not turn from your evil ways. If you do not turn from your sins and forsake them, that's where you will end up the same place. But you want to continue to mock and to make fun of God's Word. See, it says that as it was in the days of Noah, that it will be in these days as well, and we're seeing that. See, folks, in the... In, in, in the time of Noah, it says that, that he tried to warn the people that there was a flood that was coming. But it said all that they wanted to do basically was just to mock him, to make fun of him. They didn't want to listen to the Word, but he stayed faithful and still preached for those 120 years. Until finally one day, God decided to shut the door to the ark. And it says that the rain began to fall. Folks, I can only imagine as, as the rain began to fall and, and, and the, the ground began to fill up with water and the, and the people began to run to the ark. Probably running over top of each other because now they finally realized that what Noah was telling them was the truth. And folks, that's what I want you to know today. That Christ is coming back and that's the truth. Don't be like these people in the days of Noah when it's too late. But I can only imagine them running over the top of each other thinking that if they can get there quick enough that they could get inside this ark. But folks, when they got there, the door was done shut. And there was no way that anyone was getting in. I can only imagine the, the cries out to, to Noah and, and the God of Noah. I can just imagine the screams and the yells. I can imagine people beating on the side of the ark and scraping, trying to get the doors open. But it was to no avail. Until the last scream went out. Folks, I want you to know today that God is coming back. And I want you to accept Him before it's too late. Folks, I want you to know that as long as you still have that breath in your lungs and while you still have a heartbeat in your chest, I want you to know that it's not too late. It only becomes too late when you die. And folks, that's something else we're not promised another day. Folks, those of you that are listening and hearing my voice today, you could get in your automobile, you could get on this road and have a heart attack. Folks, you could be hit by another driver. We can look at the newspaper and see over the last week of just how many people has lost their lives. Folks, I don't want that to be one of you. I want you to be ready that when you die, that when you stand before the Lord, that He can look at you and say, Welcome in, thy good and faithful servant. See, the Bible says that if you don't accept Him, that you'll stand behind Him or in front of Him and you'll hear some of the, the most horrible words that you've probably ever heard in your life. Because you'll stand before Him with no excuses. And you'll hear Him say, Depart from Me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You workers of sin, depart from Me. I never knew you. And the Bible says that you will be bound hand and feet. And that you will be cast into the lake of fire. Where there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But folks, that's why I stand out here because I don't want that for you. Folks, I want you to give your life to the Lord. I want you to know that, that there's healing in the Lord. Folks, I'm here to tell you that, that people I've known that, that has, has had cancer has been healed by God's touch. God has restored marriages. 
God can store your health, your finances. See, folks, my God is not too small. My God is actually bigger than anything or any problems you could possibly have in your life. I want to remind you of a story that many people probably heard in, 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 pre, in the Sunday schools of David and Goliath. See, little David was going against this huge giant. But he didn't have any fear. And why he had no fear was because he knew that God was on his side. See, folks, the things that he was doing when he was going to fight this giant wasn't within him. He knew the battle was God's. All he had to do was be obedient. And God took care of the giant. Folks, I want you to know that God can take care of the giants that you have in your life. Because that's just how big that my God is. The Bible says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but do not the things I say? Folks, I want you to know today that if you're claiming to be a Christian, if you're claiming to call Him Lord, then you better be obedient. You better be following the, the words of this Bible. See, folks, as, as calling yourselves a child of God, you have a standard to live up to. You have to not only talk the talk, but you have to walk the walk. See, folks, I want you to know that in the Bible, there's no such thing as a Christian fornicator. See, when you became a Christian, those things, those things that the flesh desired, left you. So you became that new creature, that born again creature. So I want you to know that there's no such thing as a Christian thief. There's no such thing as a Christian drunkard. And there's also no, su no such thing as a Christian homosexual.